ಗಣಪತ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ನಮ let us all take in shiva shakti in five deep breaths om shiva shakti om shiva shakti om shiva shakti om shiva shakti om ಶಿವಶಕ್ತಿಯೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸೃಷ್ಟಿಕರ್ತ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪರಿಪಾಲಕ ಶಿವ ಶಿವದೋನಂತಹಾರಕೀಶ್ವರೋ ಗುಣಾತೀತ ಜ್ಯೋತಿಸನಾತನ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಪ್ರಾಕೃತ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿ ಪರ ನಾನಾಧಾತ್ಮ ಭಕ್ತ ಧ್ಯಾನೇತವೇಷು ರೂಪು ಯತ್ಪ್ರೀತಿ ತತ್ತದ್ರೂಪ ಬಿಭಷಿ ಚ i welcome you all to a beautiful divine journey in shivananda lahari with the guidance of bhagavad pada shri 
आदि शंकराचार्य सो इन टूडे सेशन लेट अस कंसंट्रेट फोकस ऑन व्हाट इज शिवानंद लहरी व्हाट इज इट ऑफरिंग अस व्हाट इज भगवत पादा इज ट्राइंग टू इनफॉर्म अस व्हाट इज इट व्हाट इज शिवानंद लहरी इन सौंदर्य लहरी we saw shankaracharya as highly knowledgeable tantra shastra expert isn't it in dakshina murti we saw him as a great advaita vedantin who was able to camouflage nirguna brahman with the saguna brahman and saguna brahman with nirguna brahman again in brahma gnanavali we saw his scholarship at the same time he has put his anubhava brahmananda as a great vedanta philosopher in shivananda lahari he is bhakta shiromani if it all one wants to become a devotee he has to be like shankaracharya that we come to know in shivananda lahari so in a way we can say that our bhagavat pada shri shankaracharya is all in all master of all and he is in all different shastras and philosophies but he cannot be boxed into any one particular school he is beyond he is beyond that he proves in shivananda lahari so if saundarya lahari is tantra shastra also mantra shastra when we take the surface level meaning it gives us joy happiness a kind of self confidence as we go deeper and deeper into saundarya lahari each word we could see it reveals layer after layer different deep meaning hidden in it this shivananda lahari is also very similar we can get so much from shivananda lahari which is unadulterated undiluted bhakti which is just pouring out through words how is it possible that to he goes in deep into bhakti to such an extent that it is advaita bhakti how can we understand this when he was standing in front of swayambhu mallikarjuna swami in shri shailam andhra pradesh who is with bhramaramba which is shakti peeta when he was seeing that mallikarjuna whatever he was feeling the experience what he went through he has put it in words which is gushing with so much of devotion joy that it is nothing but the waves of 
blissful consciousness which is oozing in the form of words shivananda lahari shiva pure consciousness ananda the bliss lahari which is cascading as waves so it keeps coming out for every verse so we will be seeing that when he was in front of mallikarjuna this is very important to know his eyes were seeing the two physical eyes were seeing maybe the linga but the inner eye jnana chakshu that was seeing both nirguna and saguna brahman right in front of him so shivananda lahari is that the experience of advaita bhakti which is happening within him whatever he is describing in shivananda lahari as shiva is not just the saguna brahman who is in the form as linga he has taken in that shiva and whatever he is seeing through his gnana chakshu the inner eye that experience that devotion to shiva who is present in within himself who he is seeing through gnana chakshu to that shiva he is showing his devotion immense devotion total sharanagati and that experience of shiva shakti what he is experiencing within himself is shivananda lahari so in that way he is not at all connected with the linga which is in the form in front of him as mallikarjuna he has literally gone within experiencing that shiva within he is seeing that shiva within and he is describing what he is experiencing him as in shivananda lahari because of that he is describing him as nirguna brahman which is chit ananda the blissful consciousness that is brahman nirguna brahman and saguna brahman also he is seeing which is in different forms and he is describing that i will give you one practical analogy through which you can understand how one can put himself or herself to some extent in the shoes of shankaracharya when we see the photo of our own selves when we were young younger days photo being an adult or old person i am seeing the photo when i was young even though my eyes are seeing the photo in my hand gradually my mind would go back to that day at the moment when it was clicked the photo was taken so as the mind goes to that day that moment the mind will be already revealing whatever that girl had or that boy had the experience with other people who are in the photo what happened on that day why i am wearing that frock or that pant what was the conversation when he was clicking the photo all these things go in our mind and we are not at all in the present 
isn't it the mind would have gone back totally our inner eye of the mind will be clearly visualizing seeing experiencing that younger boy or younger girl who i was long back long back haven't you experienced in your life if not see the younger days photo just concentrate on that automatically your mind will be working on that so deeply you will be coming with so many stories being unaware of i am old now or i am an adult now it goes on what is it it is the inner i of my own self which is seeing that younger days alaka who was wearing the frock and who was standing in the photo with all other people how was my mindset on that day how i used to behave during those days everything comes to my mind like that imagine yourself visualizing and having the strong presence of shiva shakti within you how you will feel automatically the mind heart intellect body will be filled with joy bliss ananda so like that when shankaracharya stood in front of mallikarjuna he was filled with shivananda lahari which took the form as a poetry which is guiding all of us after so many centuries it it teaches us how to go into shivatva that's the beauty of shivananda lahari and uh, mm-hmm. as he progresses he also shows how our mind keeps getting attracted towards the worldly pleasures and forgets about the ananda which is so eternally there within but it is veiled because the mind is running behind the sensory world so that also he teaches in shivananda lahari bliss ananda it is in different it is experienced in different levels in different stages the lowest stage is sukha that sukha is the experience of happiness with object being in connection with the sense organs once the object is taken away from the sense organ to get connected sukha will not be there it brings other emotions so it is very very temporary that sukha is there as long as there is connection between the sense organs the mind and the objects of the senses sukha the next level is there are no objects but the symbol of bhagavan is taken so when there is bhagavan one has to have the connection with that bhagavan through bhakti so there is triangle bhakta bhagavan who are connected with bhakti only when all the three are there there is happiness which is called ananda the higher level 
he will be feeling the ananda but when there is no bhakti the connection is gone when there is no Ma bhagavan in the mind it's gone so that is also temporary even though it is of higher level ananda the highest is parananda one knows that bhagavan is this very source of bliss the very source if at all there is bliss happiness it is coming from bhagavan which is within so what happens the bhakta runs towards that bhagavan to the extent that he dissolves himself in that bhagavan by losing his own individual entity like the salt doll it just annihilates in the water ocean water like that he becomes one with that total auspiciousness total consciousness total bliss that is shiva now just before totally becoming one with that ocean of parananda the last final stage where he is still hanging on to that separation i am entering bhagavan who is blissful that last stage gives highest kind of happiness which we experience that stage which we enjoy experience as ananda is shivananda which keeps gushing out as waves shivananda lahari so shivananda lahari is there within everyone who has the heart it is there in us but we have to realize it we have to experience it so that shivananda which is springing from within because there is advaita bhakti is coming as words through shankaracharya so shankaracharya has expressed his experience basically it is shivananda lahari is his experience where he has become one with shiva shakti that he is experiencing so we say bhakta shiromani what is bhakti bhakti is that extreme love to bhagavan and that love is fully annihilating our individual entity to such an extent that every thought every action every moment in all places the whole thing is filled with shiva 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 that kind of love for him it is coming on its own i am not putting the effort but the mind is running towards that shiva 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 that is devotion so when that love and devotion towards shiva is very strong naturally ananda is part of it part of it here three questions arises 
because Shankaracharya mainly known as Advaita Vedanti. So during Saundari Lahari, there was question, how come a great sannyasi like Shankaracharya could describe Devi with such detail? How could he compose Saundarya Lahari? In the same way, he is such a great Advaita Vedanta philosopher like Shankaracharya compose Shivananda Lahari, which is bhakti oriented. How is it possible? I personally also used to question myself when I used to see our Sannidhanam, Shingeri Sannidhanam performing the puja in such detail with so much of involvement, so much of bhakti. I used to wonder, such a realized soul, such great Sannidhanam, why is he doing the puja physically in such detail and with so much of bhakti? And he is giving the lectures on jnana also. How is it possible? For all that, the answer is the traditional Advaita Vedanta philosophers, they accept bhakti and jnana as two sides of the coin, but not the two repelling uh, poles, we can say. They, they are not going against one another. They are very much the two sides of the coin, bhakti and jnana. And Shankaracharya is beyond. So, we can call him Sarvadhyani. He is expert, well-trained, master of karma, bhakti, jnana marga. He is well-versed in the knowledge of what is dvaita, what is visishta dvaita, what is advaita. Because he is into all and he is beyond. So he has the knowledge, full knowledge. So we can't box him into any one. He is beyond. I will give you another very practical example or analogy. Triveni. Triveni means the plat with three strands. There are different kinds of plaits like French plait where there are too many strands. But Triveni is where there are three strands. So what do we do? We comb the hair and then hold it while combing and then we plait it where each strand will come to the prominent place. It comes on top of another and it goes below another strand. Isn't it? So it, it comes to prominence and then goes back and gives support or base to another one strand to come on it. So like that, the strand, three strands go. And at the end, it is like kunjalam. With no strands, we, uh, we cannot see the three strands at the bottom. So that is plant with three strands. It's exactly the same 
in sadhana flat also karma bhakti jnana karma bhakti jnana like that when it goes like a plant at one point karma comes to prominence next it is becoming the base for bhakti strand again that bhakti strand becomes base for another jnana strand so like that even in our sadhana karma bhakti jnana karma bhakti jnana it keeps going and when we see this plant when it is very long there is no need to bind it here it keeps going long and then like kunjalam it just unfolds without being tied undivided undisturbed the end so longer the plait there is no need to binding at the end as the sadhana is for long period of karma bhakti jnana the end would be without the trace of any strand which is brahma jnana brahmananda atma one experiences and another thing what we can learn from plant is if each strand is of equal strength equal amount the plant will be stable and beautiful to look at if one strand is big and another one is small the plant starts twisting and it gets untied even here itself so it, it becomes loose it won't stay when all the three strands are equal it stands stable and it looks beautiful so that is the second point and another it teaches a lot here in the starting it is undisturbed it is just long hair which is bound here which is jivatma when it enters the jivatma in that through sadhana of karma bhakti jnana marga it understands and again becomes untied exactly like this because the plant is there jivatma in the same way this undivided flowing hair is the consciousness when we are combing we are activating it in the same way when it is activated it enters the jivatma and it is plaited like this and because of the plait it again realizes and experiences itself as free brahma jnana and we can also say this top and this bottom they are same we are able to say they look the same both are undivided untied free how just because the plait is there so our human birth is given to experience and to understand that this 
and this are same when we say it in dvaita bhava they are same both top and bottom are same so there are two things the next level of understanding is this bottom is very much part of this top which is the source the brahman so the whole thing is part of this visishta dvaita as we start understanding more we understand this hair as well as the plant as jivatma and at the end all are the same hair the hair is common throughout only thing is the form is different the form is different we are understanding because of the presence of this plant if the plant is not there it is just flowing hair which is like inert consciousness got it so this we can see in shivananda lahari the words what he is coming out has the tinge of karma bhakti and gnana dvaita visishta dvaita advaita so shivanand lahari can be experienced in different ways it is open to all to experience that shivatva which is oozing ananda so shivanand lahari because it is the experience of a realized soul who is beyond is able to put in words what all the three are saying us how they go hand in hand at the end it gives the experience experiential knowledge which is brahma gnana so shivanand lahari is way beyond our understanding of what bhakti is he is opening bhakti it looks like it is a composition of bhakti but shankaracharya is giving us much more he is dragging pulling us through bhakti to go towards shiva so shivanand lahari is a well decorated plant which is having the flowers in different different places as the three veining <coughs> so can we go directly into that shivananda lahari state of experience it's not possible unless we have the permission of shakti shiva shakti it is activated consciousness so unless we have the permission lisa from shakti who is maya shakti we have to please her we have to take her permission so that we can cross her who is the mother and she will leave us only when we have her blessings otherwise we will be getting bound again and again by the sensual world getting attracted to the objects of the five senses so shankaracharya the bhakta shiromani goes down to shiva shakti from the beginning the very first 
verse of Shivananda Lahari is obeisance to Shiva and Shakti. He is Shiva is Shakti. Shakti is Shiva. That he makes us understand. So, when we are studying this Shivananda Lahari, we are seeing Shiva as Saguna Brahman in form who is wearing so many um, ornaments, jewels, different things as symbol of what that Nirguna Brahman is. So, we can see every shloka as referring to both Nirguna Brahman, which is consciousness, because he is one, unseparated with Shakti. He is Shiva Shakti. So, he is in the activated consciousness form when he is connected with this world. Nirguna Brahman, we are referring to activated consciousness. Saguna Brahman is that activated consciousness taking different forms like Rudra, Bhairava, uh, Shiva. In different forms and different Puranic stories we come across. Even those stories are also giving us the guidance about how to go towards that Nirguna Brahma. So, it has the poetic beauty. Shivananda Lahari has the poetic beauty, the scholarly expression he uses in Sanskrit are also displayed. At the same time, it is highly philosophical poetry. So, I will be mainly concentrating on the poetic beauty and the philosophical meaning which is hidden in every poem, <clears throat> every shloka. <clears throat> Kalabhya Choda Shashikalabhyam nijatapahal halabhyam bhatteshu prakatita phalabhyam bhavatume shivabhyam astoka tribhuvan shivabhyam hrade punaha bhavabhyam Anandas Puradanu Bhavabhyam Natiriyam In the first verse itself, he is teaching us unity in diversity and diversity in unity. Dvaita in Advaita and Advaita in Dvaita. Beautiful. What the meaning is, Kalabhyam means I bow down to Natiriyam. I bow down to Shiva Shakti who are in the form of consciousness. Kalabhyam. They are the embodiment of Kala, all the arts, Shastras. Chuda Lankrita Shashi Kalabhyam, who are adorned with the crescent moon on their Jata, which is like the crown. Nijatapa Phalabhyam, and they are having each other as a reward. For their intense tapas. 
Bhakteshu Prakatita Phalabhyam. And they are rewarding the bhaktas according in accordance with what they deserve. What they deserve. They reward. Bhavatume. Let them give me the reward as well. Shivabhyam who are Shiva Shakti, who are Shiva, auspicious. Astoka Tribhuvana Shiva Bhyam. Astoka, in abundance, unlimited, innumerable, auspiciousness. They are showering on all the three lokas. Hridi Punaha Bhavabhyam who emerge again and again, again and again in the heart of Bhaktas. Anandas Purad Anubhavabhyam They are in the form, Shiva Shakti are in the form of the experience of that ananda which is crushing out, which is springing up in bhaktas. I bow down, natiriyam. That is the meaning when we take it vertically. I bow down to Shiva Shakti who are in form, beautiful form. Kalabhyam. Bhyam, Bhyam, Bhyam. It is coming again and again, again and again. Did you watch it? Kalabhyam. Chodalankrita Shashi Kalabhyam. Nijatapa Palabhyam. Bhakteshu Prakatita Palabhyam. Shivabhyam. Astoka Tribhuvana Shivabhyam. Krudipuna Bhavabhyam. Anandas Puradanu Bhavabhyam. What is that? Bhyam, Bhyam, Bhyam. In Sanskrit, Dvivachana. In other languages, it is only singular and plural. But in Sanskrit, we have dual number as well, which is called Dvivachana. Shankaracharya beautifully has clubbed, they have put, he has put both Shiva Shakti as one Kala or Shiva. Like that, in all adjectives what he has listed, it is only one. He has clubbed both of them together. Shiva Abhyam. He didn't say Shivaya, Shivaya, he didn't say, Shivabhya. So, both Shiva and Shakti are one. So, he is calling them as Shivas, Kalas. But if I put yes, it becomes plural. But in Sanskrit, it particularly says to both of them are Kala. Both of them are Shiva. So there is only one name for them. That means what? There is so much of unity in them. Yet they are presenting themselves as two different in the world. In the mind of the Jivatmas who are totally dubbed into duality. It is we Jivatmas who are seeing Shiva, Shakti as two different entities. But it is actually one Shiva. Shiva Shakti is one. So when we say Shiva, it is both Shiva and Shakti. When we go and pray the Linga, it is the Shiva and the Pitha is Shakti. 
So Shiva Shakti are always together. So he's calling Kalapyam. He's using the word as one inseparable Shiva Shakti. So he is showing that unity in them. Now let us go into the detail because in Nama, when we take why, why Shiva and Shakti are one and the same, it is like the palm. When I say palm, you can see it this way, which looks different. I can also show you like this as palm, which looks different. But both are needed to be called as a palm. In the same way, Shiva Shakti in the manifested world are the two aspects of the same one entity called consciousness, which is Shiva. So Shiva Bhyam. They are Kala Bhyam. Kala Bhyam is they are consciousness who are working in this world as couple, but their name, there is Samya, there is similarity. Nama, Samya. Rupa Samya is also there, their form to look at. Both of them are wearing the Chandra, Chudalankrita, Shashikalabhyam. They are wearing the same kind of ornaments and they look very similar. Adhishthana, where they are, they stay in the same place. If we take Sri Chakra, it is in the Bindu, both of them are there. In Sahasrara, both of them are there. And then um, Kriya, Kriya Samya, even in Kriya, Srishti, Stiti, Laya, Anugraha, Tirodhana, Anugraha. In all these five Panchakritya, also they take the total involvement. So, however, we see there is Samya. Kala Bhyam. Kala has many meanings in the form of Atma Chaitanya, consciousness. That is Nirguna Brahma, Kala, the ray of consciousness. Also, because they have created the whole manifestation in such artistic way, it is an art piece. The whole Vishwa is an art piece, beautiful. They have created it. In that, there are so many different sciences and shastras and the kalas. They also are very artistic and so we recognize it as kala art itself. Kala bhyam. Chuda lankrita shashi kala bhyam. Why are they wearing that crescent moon? To show how the whole universe is constantly changing. Constant change in the universe is the unchanging rule of the universe. So, universe will be constantly changing. Just like the moon changes his form 15 days once. That is showing us how the universe is changing constantly and why should we hang on to that constantly changing one? We are, we are not able to hang on to any anything continuously because it is changing. The body is changing, mind is changing. So they are teaching us. Nijatapa Palabhyam. Nijatapa. 
both shiva and shakti did the penance intense penance to get one another as their spouse before they were one only for the purpose of the creation of the whole universe it is said brahma went to shiva and requested him to release shakti from him so he released that shakti who took form as the daughter of prajapati and she had to go through so many janmas so many years of tapas to become one with shiva again so her tapas resulted in shiva for her in the same way the minute he released shakti from him he became inert and he was into dhyana and it is that tapas shakti which helped shakti to become his spouse again and also in saundarya lahari we learned how shakti reflects shiva because of which he comes to know i am swaprakasha i am self illuminous and it is shiva who gave the independent power to her swatantra shakti to take care of the world again it is she who dragged shiva to get involved in the work of universe so in this way both of them are the reward for one another bhakteshu prakatita phalabhyam bhavatu me shiva shakti are always rewarding the bhaktas according to their uh, quality what they deserve they are rewarding them we humans we want everything without knowing what our punya account is we desire for everything but it is shiva shakti who reward us in accordance with what we deserve they keep giving us see how they are teaching how to lead life by accepting what they have given so slowly it washes away all impurities from us make us go closer and closer to that shivatva shiva bhyam the name shiva itself is auspicious so powerful it is mangalakara mokshadayaka shiva when that shiva bhyam that shiva shiva shakti are the ones who are taking care of the whole universe they have made it shiva maya the whole universe whole manifestation is mangalakara and auspicious because it is created by shiva shakti it is penetrated by shiva shakti it is enveloped by shiva shakti and it is also annihilated by shiva shakti when everything is the game leela of this shiva shakti activated consciousness shiva shakti activated consciousness what else is there so this shiva bhyam gives the sadhaka or the bhakta the real courage to live with 
abhaya and also another beauty about sanskrit is the reversal of the padartha the meaning of the word for example himsa himsa when you reverse the word it becomes simha and they are connected himsa and simha in the same way vashi becomes shiva vashi means what one who controls one who takes all beings the whole manifestation in their control vashi who is that vashi the greatest vashi is shiva so shiva is the one who is the ishvara when we take it as nirguna brahman it would be the consciousness it is consciousness which is controlling the whole manifested world shiva bhyam and then astoka tribhuvana shiva bhyam astoka astoka means limitless complete innumerable abundance happiness auspiciousness they are showering on tribhuvana all the three worlds which are those three worlds of course bhuloka swarga naraka we say it but when we take it philosophically all the three avasthas jagrut swapna sushupti or when we take trigunas rajas tamas and satvika when we are in those gunas are in those avasthas the world will be different the projected world the mind will be perceiving different worlds in all shiva shakti are the ones it is that activated consciousness which is taking care they bless shiva bhyam with auspiciousness to a bhakta who is all the time connected with shiva so if i understand that the whole world is nothing but shiva shakti that activated consciousness and its game naturally my mind will be working contemplating connecting my actions and thoughts with that shiva shakti which is activated consciousness so i am filled with that activated consciousness mind i become the bhakta of it and thus whether i am awake whether i am sleeping whether i am uh, dreaming in all there will be auspiciousness as a bhakta so shankaracharya has realized it so he he is experiencing o oh, shiva astoka tribhuvana shiva bhyam you are giving nothing but auspiciousness in all the three worlds in all triputis they are world by themselves but you are giving auspiciousness how dayamayi you are hrudi punar bhavabhyam shiva shakti keep emerging in the heart of bhaktas again and again again and again that means what once we say shiva shakti are eternal or all pervading all penetrating but here how can it come again and again 
it is very indirectly telling when the mind is going towards the worldly objects the thoughts are also running towards those objects but when it comes back towards shiva shakti they are so dayamayi at once uh the bhakta gets the kick of that shiva shakti and ananda in their heart so that means eternally they are there within because of which only i am able to experience shiva shakti again and again whenever my mind is going away towards the world i am missing the link but once my mind comes back to this at once they emerge in the heart so shivagno juhvanta surabhi grita dhara khutishataihi we studied in saundalahari it is that shivagno juhvanta shakti is coming from the shiva that is consciousness she is born from the consciousness that means what one has to keep them in the consciousness then shakti comes when shakti is there shiva is also there so they keep coming again and again in the hridaya of bhakta आनंद स्फुरद अनुभवाभ्या सो हाउ डू वी नो दट देर इज शिवा शक्ति दे आर इन द फॉर्म ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस वॉट एक्सपीरियंस आनंद द आनंद विच वी एक्सपीरियंस इज नथिंग बट शिव शक्ति ananda what we experience during meditation or when we are thinking about shiva shakti their leela the whole universe it is like a sport for them it is an art piece for them that thought itself brings a kind of joy in us isn't it that joy is their swarupa it is their form it is shiva shakti see how close we are to shiva shakti and how close they are to us so it is very easy to miss them very easy to get them also one has to be constantly aware of it aware of that fact hrudi punar bhava bhyam आनंद स्फुरद अनुभवाभ्या सो दे डू कम इन द हार्ट इन वॉट वे इन वॉट फॉर्म एज आनंद अनुभव द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ आनंद नतिरियम आई बो डाउन टू दट शिव शक्ति सो हियर what is the intake from this verse see the unity there is one activated consciousness it is the game of that activated consciousness which is giving rise to many thoughts many actions many forms many names but all are connected all are within just one activated consciousness which is shiva shakti and they have pervaded and penetrated the whole manifestation in which i am also one you are also one part of it so where is the necessity for us when we understand this point 
to have any fear. That strong connection with Shiva Shakti will take away the fear because the whole manifestation, all situations, the whole life has the hand of Shiva Shakti. So just go through fearlessly. Galanti Shambho Tvacharita Sarita Kilbisharajo Dalanti Dikulya Saranishu Patanti Vijayata Dishanti Samsara Brahmana Parita Popa Shamanam Vasanti Macheto Hridabhuvi Shivanam Dalahari O Shambho, your heroic stories, your glories, your movement as consciousness is flowing like a river. Charita Sarita. It is flowing like a river. While flowing, Kilbisharajo Dalanti. It subdues, it washes away the dust of impurities, which is sin, papa. It washes away the papa. Dhikulya Saranishu Patanti. And your glories, the stories about you, it goes through the canal of intelligence, intellect. Vijayatam, let it go beyond, let it be glorified. You were Charita Sarita. Dishanti samsara brahmana parita po pashamanam. Not only that, this Charita Sarita, the river, divine river of your glories, cools down, calms down the high heat, tapa which is coming because of the Brahmana wandering in the unending samsara for so many janmas. The tapa is only building up. But your charita sarita, the divine river, while flowing, is making that tapa also calm down. Vasanti Macheto Rudi Bhuvi Shivananda Lahari. And that flow of divine river is coming and stored in my heart. Vasanti, it is residing in the lake of my heart as. Shivananda Lahari. It is creating the waves within my heart so beautifully. Emitting the Ananda, which is consciousness. There is so much of meaning behind every word. O Shambho. Tvacharita Sarita. Here, Shambho refers to both Nirguna Brahman as well as Saguna Brahman. Why? How? Charita. Charita has many meanings. The glorious account, the heroic stories are bio, history, 
it also means the movement. So movement of the consciousness. Wherever there is movement of the consciousness, there the Shivananda Lahari is there. As Nirguna Brahman. Not only that, if we listen to the glories of Shiva, the stories of Shiva, that is also flowing with the Shivananda as waves in the minds of the bhaktas. How does it play? How does it work? Dhi kulya saranishu patanti. Dhi kulya saranishu. Dhi kula. Dhi means buddhi, intellect. Kula means it can be dynasty or a group, a clan or a faculty. Dhi kula. What is it? Antakarana. The intellect is with other three. Mano, Buddhi, Ahankara, Chitta. These four are Anthakkarana. Dhikula means all the four. Anthakkarana. When it goes through the Anthakkarana, the stories, what we hear, what we read about Shiva, his glories and his bio or his history, uh, scriptures or Puranas, they bring immense happiness in the form of Shivananda Nahari, which is stored in the Hridaya. How did it enter here? Because it has come through the Antakkarana. Got it? So, if there is movement of consciousness that is one. Wherever there is movement of consciousness, there is some vibrations happening. How does it move? The ray of consciousness, it enters the aham. Then, it goes further to uh, buddhi and then to manas as sense perception and then to sense organs and then to the object. The same ray of consciousness reverts back and falls on the mind and then it goes back to intellect and says, yes, I have seen it, I have heard it. I have tasted it, I have smelt it, I have touched it and it is stored in the memory. So, dhi kulya saranishu. So, it is going like a canal. It is channelized. Isn't it? That is in, in one way of understanding which we have studied in Dakshina Murti Stotra. Dhi kulya saranishu. So, when we are doing that, Shivananda Lahari, if I am studying the words are entering my mind, entering my intellect, and it is working, constantly contemplating the meaning of the word, and it is digesting, and it is stored in the heart as lake where I see the Shivananda emerging as wave. Dhi Kulya Saranishu Patanti Why is it connected with Shiva? When Gangavatarana, because we are seeing that Charita Sarita, the divine river of Shiva's glories. River. 
it refers to the water flowing. It somehow connects with Ganga Vatarana. When Ganga had to come down to earth, Avatarana, Shiva had to have her in his Jata and then she was channelized and then she was allowed to enter the earth. If she had come directly, earth would not have had the capacity to bear her. She is so forceful. If Ganga is that powerful, imagine how Shiva Charita would be. It is so sensitive, intricate, but with lots of immense impact on the bhakta or the sadhaka. So it has to be channelized. Ganga. Ganga means what? That which flows. That which flows is called Ganga. That which flows it is not necessary that it has to be only water. Jnana Ganga. The flow of knowledge. Mysore University's name is Manasa Gangotri. Another one is Jnana Gangotri. What is it? Gangotri is the source of Ganga. Here, Jnana Gangotri means the very source of the flow of Jnana, which is channelized to go everywhere in the world through Vidyarthi. In the same way, Upanishad Ganga, uh, Chinmaya Mission came up with this TV serial. Upanishad, the knowledge of Upanishad is brought, channelized as drama and it is flowing everywhere in the world. In the same way, the Himalayan glacier melts and flows. So it is called Ganga. Then what is it Ganga coming out of Shiva when we take it philosophically? Shiva is consciousness. Shakti is pure energy. So, Shakti activates that consciousness. In return, Shiva energizes Shakti with consciousness. And thus they have become one. And that activated consciousness flow and pervade the whole manifestation and also the individuals. So it is Ganga because that consciousness is flowing. It is connected with Shiva and thus poetically he has taken Sarita as the Nadi or the river which flows. It, it actually opens the new horizon to understand just one word. Tvacharita sarita or dhikulya saranishu. Shankaracharya is just telling one, one word, but how much is hidden in each word and how much it is teaching us. Dishanti samsara brahmana parita kopa shamanam. The quality, nature of water is to wash away, cleanse or subduing the dust, which it does as we see it in our practical life. This 
Ganga of Shiva, the consciousness and his glories are ready to take away the papa. They wash away the sinful dust from all the bhaktas. That is one nature. Another nature of water is cooling down. Whatever objects or people, when it comes, when they come in contact with water, automatically they become calm and cool, both mentally and physically. If water itself, normal water itself has that amount of capacity in it to cool down, imagine this divine river. Charita Sarita, it calms down the Karana Sharira itself by taking away the Papa. Karana Sharira is where the thought, the very first thought arises. There itself, if it is cleansed from Papa, automatically the Sukshma Sharira as well as the Stula Sharira will also get cleansed. And Brahmana in the samsara, which is unending samsara, if one is going, wandering janma to janma in the samsara, how much tapa they would have collected? This Charita Sarita has that capacity, strength, power in it to make that person calm, peaceful. This is the experience of even the toddlers like sadhakas and the bhaktas. When the mind is given towards Shiva, Shakti, their stories, their thought, or the clear understanding that the whole universe is nothing but the game, sport, leela of activated consciousness. Won't it calm us down in all situations? Automatically, as a reflex action, many of the things will get away from our life. So, that is the beauty of, that is the trick of Shiva Shakti how they take care of us. So, slowly, Shankaracharya is driving the point, become the bhakta of Shiva Shakti. Bhakta means, become part of Shiva Shakti thought. The thought itself will take care of the next step. Vasanti Macheto Hrida Bhuvi Shivananda Lahari This is Swat, uh, Swatma Rupa Darshana. Swatma Rupa Sandhana. Where it happens automatically. When the heart is filled with the Shivananda Lahari, automatically the thought will also be filled with Shivananda Lahari. That means the blissful consciousness as surging with happiness like waves. Vasanti Macheto Hrida Bhuvi. Vasanti means it resides, it is not temporary in a bhakta, in a real bhakta, genuine bhakta who is engaged with the understanding, with the knowledge, with the experience that the whole manifestation is Shiva Shakti and their Leela. Automatically, their Hridaya will be filled with those thoughts. So the lake starts becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. More the 
lake is made big, the waves will also be many. Like that, reading or listening to Shivananda Lahari automatically brings the joy, calmness, purity in mind to Bhakta, which prepares us to experience Shiva Shakti in a beautiful way when we are in this human life. So, Shivananda Lahari, when we are reading, studying, listening to it with mind and heart, automatically it enters the intellect and contemplation starts happening and the jnana will also start revealing from within and thus it becomes parayana, not just an intellectual study or listening to a story. We will be enjoying the poetic beauty as well as going towards that Shivatva with the guidance of Shivananda Lahari. Om Shiva Shakti Shiva Shakti Shiva Shakti Om Shiva Shakti 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 Shiva